heard it somewhere in the 60s as an official type of business. Um, and what we do is unpaid advertising compared to marketing or advertising, which are things that you see every day as um, promoted placements on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. So it's a little different. Everything I do is unpaid media. Um, I studied communications in college, in City College, and I know you guys had a speaker recently from City College, a cardiologist, and just wanted to touch on that for a second because I was watching his video and we had very different experiences at City College. The community there was not anti-Jews, they were not anti-Semitic. Um, some of my best friends that I made in school were made at City College. And it was an amazing opportunity to speak and learn about different people who I've never met before, right? So we're kind of in this bubble, though for me as an Ashkenazi Jew, was coming to Blackwish was like super diverse to meet all the SY kids. But when you um, when you went up when I went up to college, I realized that like even even with our diversity here, it's still a bubble. And so being able to meet different people with different points of view and speak to them and learn about their opinions and teach them about my viewpoint, or when it comes to Israel, all the advocacy I had learned to be able to apply that to people who had never heard about the real situation. It was such a huge opportunity, and it creates really strong lasting bonds, and it also enhances things like your communication skills, which is what I do for a living now. It also broadens your horizon so that you're able to interact with different people of all kinds. So I really encourage you to speak with different people when you go to college and not be afraid of confronting people with different opinions. Lapish has trained you well for that. Uh, so that's my piece on that city college bit. Um, after college, I went into startup PR. Um, actually worked for another former Lapish student in his startup until they sold, and then I went into healthcare. I had always been interested in healthcare until about 10th grade. Um, I wanted to go into medicine like as a doctor, uh, but I did really well in chemistry, so that kind of changed my direction a bit and I explored other areas including art and fashion, um, but speaking and writing was always my strong suit. Yeah, and so I found myself in communications and then eventually I found myself back in healthcare PR. So currently I am a media associate at New York Presbyterian's Office of Communications. New York Presbyterian is the number one hospital in New York State, number eight in the country. We have campuses all across the city, uh, all across New York City, the five boroughs, and Westchester. And I work at the Columbia campus up in Washington. Uh, I also apply my skills to areas that I'm passionate about, um, particularly politics. Um, so I'm the communications manager for my local Democratic club on the Upper West Side. Uh, there are local political clubs for Republicans, Democrats of all kinds across our city. And then the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, started a new initiative for young people. So I've been assisting in communications plans and outreach programs with them as well. Uh, I mean, so what is PR? I pulled these things from Wikipedia and Google because PR is a really weird thing to define. Um, Essentially, it is the maintenance of your relationship or your organization's relationship or your celebrity's relationship with the public. Um, and that's via means of unpaid placement like an article. So I will have a doctor speak with a news reporter about a study that came out that they did or a third party commentary for a study that came out that they didn't publish but that they are interested in speaking about. Um, move on. It's really long. So market PR is part of the marketing umbrella, and this is actually a really big thing because people confuse marketing and PR a lot. So I tell people I work at New York Presbyterian in their PR department, and they go, we love your ads. And I said, I had nothing to do with them. Um, but it is part of the larger marketing umbrella, which includes research, advertising, promotion, sales, and now social media, which is a huge part of both marketing and public relations. Um, there, in healthcare PR, there are different areas you can work in. In the entire PR industry as a whole, you can work either in-house or at a firm. So you can work at an agency, and when you're working at a firm or an agency, you're working on multiple clients. So at the first firm I worked at, I worked at any given time across five or seven different clients, um, ranging from healthcare to higher education, some consumer, and you kind of get a taste of everything. And different agencies specialize in different things. So you also have, you have large agencies that 
run the gamut and I'll do a little bit of everything. Or you can work in a specialized healthcare agency, which is something I also did, where I focused on pharmaceutical clients in particular. Um, so that would talk, so that actually is a lot more ma um, reputation maintenance and consumer advocacy because, or as you know, pharmaceutical companies are always nervous about getting a bad reputation. So that was a little different from the consumer and health and medicine PR that I do now at New York Presbyterian. And these are just some areas of healthcare PR that you can work in. So as I was saying before, this is an example of what I don't do. You could play it if you want. But it relates to what I do. There are certain protocols about 
what we can tell the media in a, in a situation specifically like this. So we give out, we tweeted out uh, updates as they were occurring to make sure the public remained knowledgeable about what was going on. And we also informed the media about those same updates. So with my editorial team, we create a statement, which is slightly longer than this, but along the same lines of these are comedy patients we have, and we have condition updates, and we send that out to the news media. So we are constantly a liaison between reporters and editors and the hospital. Uh, next one, I don't know if there is anything else. I think that's it. Okay. Um, so just trying to think what I was going to, I missed anything. Um, yeah, so what, what I like the most about PR is that I can apply both communications and written skills in a lot of different areas, right? So this past week, I was working on an emergency situation while I was in Colorado working at a conference. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so a little, a little, thank God we have other people on my team who are there to assist. Um, in particular, when you work in PR, you can apply, you can work in the areas you like and do PR, right? So I started out in fashion. I thought I really wanted to work in fashion. I did some internships in fashion PR, decided it was the opposite of what was for me, and I found something else that was more suited for what I was interested in. And then even at the hospital, I don't work across every type of medicine and health at the hospital. It's huge. Like, I don't work on pediatrics. I don't work on women's health. But I work on things that interest me. So I work on cardiology and transplant and government and community affairs because that's obviously a passion of mine. And I and I apply the skills that I that I've learned throughout high school, college, and since then to what I do. And then I'm also able to apply that skill set in my personal life. So when I do my volunteer work in politics. That's that. Okay, so we're gonna open it up to questions. I'm sure you have a lot of very good questions. Mr. Chatan? Okay. You guys don't have to have Well, I wanted to ask what made you switch from something like fashion to something very serious like cardiology and news media? So during college, I realized I did not want to go into the fashion industry, and I had an advisor in City College who would not allow us to have internships in the fashion industry because the fashion industry, generally speaking, has a lot of illegal internships. So they don't pay you and they don't require you to get school credit. Um, that's basically the makeup of a, actually an illegal internship. So she also was very, very insistent that we had internships that included writing. Fashion industry PR is its own beast and doesn't include a lot of writing. So I went to the Big Apple Circus for my internship. And I grew up going to the Big Apple Circus, and one of the things I got to do at the Big Apple Circus was write about um, their medical clowning unit that they have in hospitals. So I went along to Harlem Hospital, and I visited the unit, and I walked around with these clowns, and I remember how much I liked healthcare. So when it was time to, when I was leaving um, on Roll Me, which is where I worked right after college, it was the first job I could get, and it was great to work with fellow Flacco Shalom. Um, when I was Yes. Um, when I was leaving there, I said, let me try for an agency. And I looked for an agency that did a lot of nonprofit and healthcare work, which I remember that that was something I really enjoyed doing when I was at the Big Apple Circus. So I ended up at a PR agency that the group I worked, with, worked in specifically did healthcare and higher education PR. And that's kind of how I transitioned back into that. I might want to tell you that I don't know if anybody here, but we, we did a, a medical clown training oh, yeah? this year, and we'll be going out in two weeks to do that. That is very exciting. And I also wanted to say the Big there. Apple <laughs> Circus happens to, they'll be in town until January at Lincoln Center, but they do a lot of charity pieces. Yes, they have like special events. Sunday, them. they had for the Brain Tumor Foundation, oh, yeah, so I went that. with them. So that's something interesting. Mr. Chira? Is there, isn't an attack, what are you guys tweeting about, what are you guys talking about? What? If there isn't an attack, like... What are we gonna, tweeting about? Yeah. Sure. So I have coworkers that work in social media, but um, I help out because I have some background in that. And it can be anything from the stories that people are writing about us, or we actually create native content. So we have a blog called Health Matters, um, which literally looks like a health news website. It's blog is kind of a, not a great word for it. 
Um, so we'll tweet out content for that, or we'll create native content. So we'll speak with patients or doctors and nurses and social workers and profile them. So we, we have a variety of content ranging from something like this, which is not frequent, right? It's once in a blue moon. It's actually the only time, the first time I've ever done this since I started a little over a year ago at the, at their, the institution. Or we did a lot of tweeting about the conference I was at this week, and that was something that I took control of. Um, and we utilize our graphic designers and our social team and our editorial team to kind of work together. Um, did New York Presbyterian ever do anything to like put your reputation in jeopardy and like had to fix it? If it did? Sure. Um, actually, before I got there, there is something called HIPAA laws, which are laws around um, patient privacy information. So there was a TV show called New York Med been replicated in things like Chicago Med, and they filmed in our hospital. And we worked, and again, I did not work on this at all, I was not there, but they worked on, they filmed in the hospital environment, and then something happened, and there was a lawsuit, and New York Presbyterian lost the lawsuit. And the lawsuit was about a HIPAA violation. So after that, because of the lawsuit, they were on what's called a correction. And so the way we worked with that was that we worked with our legal team and said, okay, we're going to be hyper conservative about the type of media we allow into the hospital until we feel that legal and the rest of the hospital feels comfortable enough to ease back into it. Um, but there are always, you know, there can always be a patient complaint and things like that. And we do our best to push them to the right department, usually patient services that will help them. Okay, so did you ever consider like going to like, writing newspapers or being a reporter because you like to like, talk to the public so much, so this would be a way to relate the public also? Yes. Um, this was more, I got to touch a little more things, a little, I got to do a little social, I got to do a little, I have, I'm proficient in Photoshop, I got to do a little bit of that. Um, I liked the internal side. Act, and journalism is not the easiest job to get into nowadays. It's also, this is also much more secure living. Um, if you're into journalism, I very much encourage you to continue and pursue that. But what we see is that actually a lot of journalists, as they get more senior in their career, they actually come over to the PR side a lot. Interesting. Anyone? Um, so you mentioned a lot about this non non for profit, but mm -hmm. like, what does PR really mean um, regarding regarding a for profit company and its sales and even something like, sure. like real estate. Ha let's say a real estate does does major charity. How would that actually how they how would that actually benefit them? Sure. Um, I don't have the algorithm on me. It happens to be that all hospitals in New York are nonprofits, so this is technically a nonprofit. Um, I don't have the algorithm on me, but public relations professionals say that PR is actually like worth significantly more in return than advertising. The difficulty is always that you can't measure sales with PR. So I can't know that if an article ran in the Wall Street Journal about the charity event that I'm having for my real estate like agency and doing good, or the ch not a charity event, if I can't, if, I'll give you an example of Unroll Me, right? When I worked at Unroll Me, we had a CBS segment with David Pope, who writes a lot on Yahoo and does CBS tech segments. And at Unroll Me, we, have, we had a ticker that goes up to show how many users we have. Um, and as that segment aired in Eastern time, it, the ticker went crazy. Our users, we surpassed like a huge number of users. We hit milestones from that. And that, I don't know if that would have been more than advertising, but the argument is always that because they trust David Poe more than they trust an Unrolmian, they're more likely to sign up for something or utilize your product because someone they trust told them about it. So you're saying like, that, now you're also saying that the face of the company matters almost more than the advertising also. No, I mean, David Pogue, is a, he's a tech reporter. So he oh, just okay. spoke about, sorry, he spoke about our company on, and he like did like a demo of an me. And so because of that, because people trust him, yeah. then they utilize it. I mean, reputation always matters, whether it's who's the celebrity or who's running your country. Since uh, you're non-profit, so how does salary work? How does salary work? Well, in hospitals, salaries tend to be pretty good. Um, <laughs> it's just a bet. Yeah, yeah, and the benefit, well, yes. Um, I've been fortunate that I've always had good benefits in the private jobs that I've had.
but in hospitals, benefits also tend to be really good. Um, we were actually just recently one of the first hospitals in the country, and I believe the first one in New York, to implement paid family leave program, which is surprising that no hospital had it beforehand. Um, so I'm over here. Um, but how many teams are there in the actual uh, hospital? Like working on different things, you said social media. Yeah, in my department. How, yeah, how many? Because it, it seems like there's a lot more. It's like clockwork. There's a lot more behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. think. Personally, before this, I thought, okay, so their hospital. I, you know, they have a Twitter or whatever. But, but I never thought that this, there were so many teams involved. We're definitely small teams. So our social media team is currently three people, and that's new because we just had a new person join us. Um, but in my department specifically, we have social media, public affairs, which is my team, editorial, which manages, which helps us edit news releases or statements, manages our blog. Um, we have internal relations, which met, which just works with human resources to send out messages to people that work for the hospital. And and then we have marketing, which is a quite part of our, our, our department, but we work with them very closely. And then we're always working with our counterparts in the physical hospital, whether it's doctors, people running the floor of a hospital, or nurses, or patient services. So you're right, it's always like, we're always having to talk to everyone so that we can get things through smoothly. It's a lot of planning involved. Okay, we'll take one more question. That's it. Okay. Oh, oh, Carol. Okay. All right. All right. Two more. Ricky and then. Yeah. Right, so let's say like a company or a celebrity like says something very bad that ruins their whole reputation. Would you would you like recommend say like apologizing for it or dancing around it and like lying about it? Like, I'm always for apologizing. <laughs> and now like like. I'm never it. for lying. I know people always say that PR is spin, but at the end of the day, it's back to bite you, and you're better off. Apologizing for what happened, saying it was a mistake, and moving forward, and working to rectify that mistake. I think we have one here. Sorry. Um, so, if they now want to get into PR, what skills do you recommend they have? What internships, things that they do? Definitely writing skills, which you guys get really good writing skills and English skills here. I was my my professors in college were shocked at how well I was able to write when I started. Um, I, I really have to <laughs> I'm pretty close with one of my psych professors, and she had come up to me at one point during the second course I took with her asking how it's humanly possible that all of these students seem not to know how to formulate a sentence correctly in English. Um, not so, Yeshiva Flackwood. <laughs> yes, so writing skills and speaking skills. So I encourage you to, like, things like debate team or mock trial. Those things enhance your communication skills. Um, internships can include physical PR internships. PR agencies have internships. More often than in-house, more than organizations, the Gotham Circus is kind of an anomaly that they had an intern. Um, but also, like, radio stations have internships. Every single organization or industry that you're interested in, it could be real estate, they'll have an internship potentially for you. So I recommend reaching out to those types of organizations that you're passionate about and asking them about their internship programs. Excellent.